and I model the base mesh to be as tall as that. And it's good to establish scale as early on as possible, because as you jump back and forth between apps, you want to have this consistent. So you don't have to rescale everything once you want to, OK, now I put underwear on him, and then suddenly that's modeled to one-tenth scale, and you have to scale it up, and it kind of gets messy. So establish scale early on, and don't really worry about the prettiness of it. And since we live in 2015, I would never really go in and hand model how the body will actually look. We have sculpting programs for that, and ZBrush is uh, the best tool for that right now. So I would take that this crude model and sculpt him very crudely, exploring the forms. Let's see. Uh, Since this is a lecture on how to use ZBrush in detail, I will kind of go a bit fast through it. And I can give you lots of links to good tutorials that will explain the software in detail if you want to learn how to use it. It's really a great piece of software with some quirks. Uh, but it really is the best way to exp uh, like Maya is a technical tool. 3 Studio Max is a technical tool. So it's really difficult to explore ideas really fast unlike drawing, which it's just you and a pen, get the idea down on paper. And ZBrush is the same pen and paper in 3D. You just take your mesh and subdivide it, and then you have these brushes to kind of, whoa. Shape it as you want. I don't think there's pressure sensitivity on this right now. So that's odd. So once I have this, like, the same Maya model in here, I would just go in with a move brush and shape it to kind of fit the proportions I need. But since this is an early stage, I would probably not go in for the final detail at once. And I think it's easy. Like, if you want to sculpt the hands, it's kind of bothersome to kind of zoom in here and work on it when you have the whole model in the same mesh. So I would probably separate it into its own model. Let's see. And. Let's see, geometry. Oh. This is not responding well. There we go. This looks a bit more uh, awkward than it really is, but I'm not used to this setup. It doesn't have my hotkeys, I just realized. So I would keep this hand as a separate model. I would probably separate the head as well. Mm. 
I'm just duplicating the base mesh over and over and kind of deleting what I have hidden. So now we have like these isolated models. And at that point, I would probably go into geometry and turn on a feature called DynaMesh, which kind of ruins the whole model with, uh, uh, let's see. It, qua uh, it makes triangles and uh, quads all over in a uniform pattern. And normally, this is not really what you want to do. But early in this, in this stage, when you're just wanting to explore shapes and such, it's fine. Because in, you will probably retopo the model afterwards. Because if you make like big changes to the forms like this, you realize that, oh, the geometry is not really malleable. It doesn't really work to sculpt on this. But with DynaMesh, you can just tell it to remesh, and then suddenly you've got geometry you can sculpt on. This is not working at all. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, and here you can kind of see what I've been uh, doing. This is the same base mesh that I started with. This is the same stage where I've split everything up into different tools. And it's uh, just DynaMesh. And it's looking all kinds of messy, but it allows me to kind of just explore I want his face to look like. I don't even think about the eyes, just the proportions for now. And once I kind of have this, um, the base shapes down, and I think, okay, I might want to reconnect them to have a more accurate base mesh. I will select them all. I, I don't want to import this straight into Maya because it's a bit too heavy in geometry. So I will use a plugin called the Decimation Master that will kind of reduce the amount of polygons without losing any of the detail. So it keeps all the major forms that I'm interested at, but way, way lower resolution. Same for this. And once I have that, I will just re-import them into Maya. To do that, you can just click on the subtools and hit export. And let's see if I have them in a nice place. Head decimated. Do it the same with the body. At this point, I don't really have any UVs on my model because I know they will go get ruined anyway by how I treat them this poorly. Mm -hmm. Like if you decimate and start to throw things back and forth between Maya and ZBrush, you risk losing your UVs. So they're not really necessary. I kind of separate the different stages. Like now I'm 
just thinking about shape. So I do whatever workflows I need to kind of just explore that. And I can worry about the rest later. So then I would just place the hand where it needs to be. And then I would combine them. Now this is one solid mesh. It looks, topology-wise, this is not really acceptable in any way. So I can't really continue to work on this or make UVs or anything. But uh, there is a tool in the newer versions of Maya in the modeling toolkit here that is called Quadra. So if you select the model you want to draw on top of, you can just select it, hit this uh, Make Object Live button. And now you can't select it anymore. But with the Quadra, you can just click to place vertices and then make a polygon on top of it and kind of draw a new geometry on top. Then you can make a clean topology and edge loops and all where you need it to be. If I'm making a model for just an illustration, like I know it's not going to be animated or anything, then I might take a few shortcuts and don't really bother too much about making clean topology. It's a good exercise, but uh, it's also very time consuming to make a really good uh, topology. So pick your battles. If you know that your project isn't going to need the most precise topology, then don't really bother. Like if you have props hidden in uh, the corner of a scene, don't put all your effort into that, just you can even decimate it and throw it in the corner. You, you won't notice. You, it doesn't need proper topology. Just as long as you know how to do it properly if you need to. I'm going to, let's see. And the reason I combined the, all the different models uh, before I started using this tool is that I can uh, model across of them. Or else I would have to retopologize them separately, which is also fine, but you have to stitch them together afterwards. Uh, let's see if I have finished one. This does not have my hotkeys either. That's lovely. So this is the model I imported from ZBrush, I think. Uh, yeah, here it is. As you can see, I've just placed the hand right on top, head right on top. And topologize, retopologize this on top. And this has a clean enough topology that I can really take this to the finished stage, which means you lose a lot of freedom once you decide, okay, this is the final topology. And I think it's at this stage I would make some temporary UVs for him. Because if you have UVs, you get a lot of, uh, you get a safe line, basically. Mm. To make UVs, I generally, let's see if I have some UVs on me now. Oh, that's good. I just take the edge tool and select where I want the seams to be, which is uh, around the big shapes. If you have a good topology, then it should be very effortless to make the seams because you can just double click on the edge to select the edge loop. 
and then I go into the U editor and say make a cut where I have the selection which is this button right here. If we can make it display the texture borders. So now you can see that there is a seam here. And we will continue to do this for the rest of the body. For the hands, I usually put an edge loop around the side here because it has a clean line going through all the middle of the fingers. And then deselect the side here because I want these to be connected as I unwrap. So I kind of get this motion. So I made some basic cuts and just to demonstrate on this, I go into shell mode, which is would select uh, UV island based on where the seams are. And then it's just hitting this unfold button right here. We right click to make sure that it's on unfold 3D because that's the new unre unwrapping algorithm that Maya 2016, I think, came with because the old one is completely useless and just hit apply. And then you get this clean unwrap of the hand. Let's see. Same with the arms. Make a cut along the side. And we can select the UV shell, hit unfold. And it's a clean unwrap. And then you just repeat that stage for all the, all the body. If you want to pack all these, you can also just use the pack button once you have all the things unwrapped and it will Organize it all into the same tile. Let's see. Uh, oops. Doesn't really work now since I haven't unwrapped the whole body. But that button will kind of rescale all the UVs so they're the same size, which is really important when you have a character, and place them all within one tile in as efficient manner as possible. But you might need to give it some help. Anyway, once I have gotten to the stage and made the UVs, I would then take it back into ZBrush and start making my high resolution model uh, the details. Then I just export it anywhere as a. Uh, okay. As an OBJ. And now you just sculpt on this till you're done. I usually use uh, the damn standard brush to kind of get some define some where I want some edges if this stem where I can work
Like imagine there's a muscle here and you want to be there to be a crease, the clavicle here. And you kind of just define where you want stuff to be. And then go over with a clay two brush and kind of work with the form and smooth it out. And then use the trim dynamic brush to kind of flatten the edges. Also, at some point, I would start with the. Um, this is still the rough model that is uh, s separated. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is the retopologized model. Let's see. And the same way I have kind of blocked out the body earlier, I would start blocking out the clothes. To do that, for example, if I wanted to um, make the uh, underwear, I would just make a mask where I want the underwear to cover his body. and then make, extract the form from that. Let's see. And that will create a new tool based on what you, the selection made. And then you can sculpt that and shape that and explore what kind of shape do you want his underpants to be. So if you want to make this eyes for yourself, I would just do the same thing. and then shape those into place as well. The same if I want to make his rope. This can also be used for jackets and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. So I would basically treat everything in ZBrush as just clay that you mold around and explore shapes with. Don't think so much about the proper topology and how to make it clean, because that's not the point at this stage. But once you do make it clean, you got to be real careful to not mess anything up. So here you can see I've kind of just sketch in how do I want this uh, like this uh, trunk to look how do I want these ears to look and they're all just raw like decimated you know dynamesh models so 
So after a few times, back and forth between Maya and Seabrush to kind of explore uh, and kind of retopologize all the models as I go, you can go into the details like this. This is basically the model I had in uh, Maya once I retopologized the uh, block in, in Seabrush. And I just sculpt some basic forms. So this is about the like the stage I would go to before I start. How do I want to post this thing? How do I make it look like the final image? And as this pose was very important in uh, my concept, I decided to make a quick rig of him. Let's see. Uh, These are the base meshes of uh, the objects I want to treat as my final objects. And they're not really complex at all. As long as you keep the shaping separate from the technical parts, it's really easy to make something that looks clean and have good shapes, but it doesn't really overwhelm you. Because if you ha try to do both things at the same time, it takes a lot longer unless you're really, really, really good. So to rig this, I used a script called Advanced Skeleton that is free for Maya, and it allows you to just say, hey, I want a skeleton for this body, and then you can just say, here is the shoulder, here is the elbow joint, here is the wrist joint, this is the hip, and all that, and it will kind of make the whole model for you. There is uh, something similar to 3 Studio Max as well, I think, uh, uh, there's a called Super uh, Superuna, has a script called it uh, for just making a quick rig in 3 Street Max, and I've used that as well, and it works fine for like this if you would just want to pose in quickly, and this allows me to kind of just explore how I want him to stand really fast. But as you can see, the deformations of the body isn't really accurate because I haven't really mu uh, used much time to make it look good because that's an uh, art craft on its own. So this is not really proper to poly or an anatomy, as you might see. But I don't really care too much about it because uh, once I have a, a pose I am happy with, I will make a duplicate of this that is living separately from the rig itself. Uh, where did I duplicate him? So if this was the pose I settled for, I will then take that out to uh, ZBrush. And then just basically correct it.
So let's say this was more no proper pose, like how it would actually look if you reshape the muscles and such. You export that back out, pose, fixed. And we can import that into Maya again. So this is the Maya model. And then you can basically tell it to uh, blend shape between them. Uh, The reason I use blend shapes to kind of make these corrections rather than just, okay, d delete this one and just use this instead, is that if you have like complex UVs or you have already set up shaders and textures and all that, you don't really want to replace that and have to reassign all the materials and all that. So then it's just nice to have like this kind of modifier to change the shape. But, uh, yeah. And I would do this for all the props as well. Like for the props that don't deform, like having a phone in his hand or a wristwatch, I would just parent it to the skeleton itself. So wherever the bone moves, the prop moves with it. But for underwear, I would rig it so it deforms along with the body. So when I rig it, it kind of deforms along with it. But that will also be, have to be corrected like everything else here. And once I have all the props and character into posts, I just take them back into ZBrush for a final layer of detail. Because as you post, you lose a lot of muscle definition and you kind of want to fix things and make them look good and treat it like a, as a sculpture at that point, if you're working with an illustration. And here I would also make a pose. And I would transfer these details back in, onto the character using displacement maps and blend shapes. Sadly, I have to rush through this how to actually do this because I'm getting a heads up on time and we started late, which is a shame. Uh, let's see, where did I put this? So this is how the final scene looks like with him in pose. And this is all this pose is baked down. I don't have a skeleton attached to him anymore. And they, it's still all like low poly, so I use displacement map to get the detail back out. And I just place basic lights to give the mood I need. Uh, for this project I use a render engine called Arnold which is used for feature films uh, such as Star Wars and the Spider-Man movies and all that and if you come from mental ray background you'll know how tricky the render settings can be to kind of get a good result and this one just says screw all of that He's, here are some simple settings do you have reflections yes do you have bounce light yes and then you say how much how pretty do you want him to be and then you just adjust that here and let's see. And you just hit render, and you can kind of get a preview of how it look and just kind of move around. 
So you can kind of get a real-time feedback of how things will look. How will this uh, light look if I change the color of it? And this is how kind of I would change shaders and work with to make a final look for this. Uh, I'm sorry, this is like all the time I really have before I'm thrown off. Uh, I'm sorry it didn't get to show actually how to do most of these things because of the time issue. But I'm here for the rest of the gathering and I have really nothing to do. So if you want to have like a more detailed walkthrough or if you have some questions you want answered, I'm available and I'm bored. Please give me something to answer. <laughs> and I'll have another lecture in uh, an hour and 10 minutes about how to environments and hopefully it will be smooth from the start to so have a bit more time to kind of go through the process. But the point, the most important thing to take away from this is that start loose, explore shapes and kind of take things in steps. And I see if you break it down properly, it's not really that complicated. And start with a, like, figure things out as much as possible in 2D and sketches first and then go from there. And that's it for now.